Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and this coming week we are doing this gorgeous poppy tutorial. So I'm just gonna break it down for you into four steps, really simple, we're gonna do different parts as we go and in the end it will all come together and be really gorgeous. So, um, the supplies that we're using today are, the brushes are round, they're around six and around two. I like working with these different sizes because the round six really large, you can fill a lot of space and the round two is perfect for um, detail work or thinner lines. And then the colors that we have today are scarlet, uh, which is our nice bright red for our flowers. We have black for our um, little poppy dots in there, olive green for our greenery and our stems, and then I mix the olive green and the juniper green to get this really pretty kind of um, turquoisey green color that we have going on here. So I'm gonna put some colors on my palette. Now if you order our kits, you're gonna get them in um, these little bottles over here. They're gonna come like this and they're gonna be labeled. And um, we designed them that you can just dump them out, but if you don't wanna dump them out, you can just take your brush and just kind of pick out some color and just put it on your palette just with your brush. And then that way you can save the leftover paint in there for future projects because most of the time we're not gonna use all of the paint um, for the one painting. So that's our olive green here. And we have the juniper, which is the blue. And I like to put colors um, near the edge of my palette. And then the ones that I know I'm gonna mix together, I put them near each other. So the blue I'm gonna put over here because I know it's gonna mix with the green. And then the black I'm gonna put over here too, just in case I wanna mix with my green on that one also. So our very first step that we're gonna start with our poppies is we're gonna put in our blooms, which is just the red flowers, our petals, and um, that's a good place to start because then you kinda of know how the composition is going to start on your painting. It's always a good idea to um, kinda of have a roadmap almost of where you're gonna go when you start painting. And so I'm gonna rinse my brush here. I'm gonna pick up some of this scarlet and I'm not mixing this with anything. And when I'm picking up paint from my water, um, I'm gonna dip, if I have a clean brush here, I, I get it wet, but I kinda like um, tap it on the side of the glass so extra water drips off so it's not totally soaking. And then I kinda like to like swirl in my paint here. And so for this, I'm gonna have uh, mostly paint on my brush. And then I'm gonna start with the petals. Now, you can see here from my example, I'm just gonna kinda follow along of where they're at. So the first one I'm gonna do is this top left one, right here, I'm gonna put that one. And the reason why we don't wanna start right in the middle um, is because usually when you have a flower directly in the middle, it's very hard composition wise to make the painting feel even. So usually I like to start off center when I'm doing a flower. And then for these petals themselves, I do kind of like a curved, kind of almost a teardrop shape like this. And then I fill them in. And then I'm gonna do one across directly across from that. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here. So I'm leaving a tiny little gap because that's the center of my poppy. And then I'm gonna do this other teardrop shape and fill that in. Just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that dry for a second. I'm gonna move on to another flower because these petals that are behind here, I usually just take water and spread them to make the next petals so then they're lighter in value. But if we did that right away, then this would lose its shape, the first petals that we put down. So I'm just gonna place those first two first and then I'll go back to it. So I'm gonna go to the one kind of directly over here, which is the smaller one. I'm gonna do my teardrop petal. And then the one directly across from it leaving a little white space in between. They kind of almost look like bow ties. And then um, I'm gonna do one that's kind of on the side. So these ones, it's almost like they're opening right at us, like we're directly looking at it. And then this one that we're doing, it's almost like it's angling away from us. So it's gonna be more of a side view of that flower. And so I'm gonna go across here and I'm going to do kind of like one large teardrop again. And then like um, a smaller kind of curved outline 
on either side. Just like that. And then we have these um, smaller poppies that are kind of starting to open up. They haven't fully formed yet. They're kind of like buds. And for those ones, it's just one teardrop here. So I'm going to do a teardrop down here. And then a teardrop kind of over in this area. Now remember that this, because this is a floral paint painting, I didn't want to do an outline because I want you to understand that it's okay for you to kind of like do your own thing and make them different sizes and go in different areas. So this one is probably even going to look a little bit different from this example that I have here and that's okay. Yours is going to look slightly different. That's fine too. We all have our own styles. We're all our own creatives. And so just embrace it if it's just a little bit different. So I put down my first um, petals and then I'm, I'm just going to finish them up and so what I do is I just clean my brush so it's just damp. I'm going to knock off some of the water so it's not totally dripping and then using the paint that's already there I'm going to make um, like a half circle almost kind of connecting these so it's behind it. Now this is still wet so it's bleeding a bit but that's okay. I kind of like it to to bleed a little bit. Um, this one might not do it as much but that's okay. And when you come back, you kind of want to meet, you, do, you want these petals to be bigger and they're going to be kind of almost underneath and connecting the two. So they're going to kind of come out from the middle of the petals that we already have like out of the sides here. And then you just kind of fill them in just like that. And now we have this kind of like really loose, um, like kind of free flowing poppy going on. Now you can shape them up if you want, like, um, if you want them to be a little bit darker in color, you just grab more color from the previous petals that we put and blend them back and forth. Just like that. Or if you want to leave them light, you don't have to mess with them too much. Just like that. So there's our first poppy. And then I'm just going to go around to the rest of the painting and fill out these poppies here. So kind of starting from the side of my first one and going out to the side of my other, I'm going to connect them and drag that water down. Now when you connect them, you don't want them to be like a perfect semicircle here. You don't want the shape to be like a rainbow. What I like to do usually is I like to kind of go out a little bit like this. So it's more like this shape here. We do the same thing on this side. Kind of connect those. And you can mess with this a little bit. You can blend some more colors, blend these colors out a little bit. But poppies are really papery, they're really flowy, so it's okay if they're really kind of light looking. So when you go, when you connect them, see how I'm kind of hitting like the side of this one and the side of this one? that's where we connect them. So it's almost like not completely in the middle because this would be in the middle here and we want it to be a little bit bigger. So it's like near the top edge but not um, connecting that top edge or else it would just be like more of a circle. There wouldn't be these indents here. So it's like near the top, like top middle. That's where I kind of connect it and flow them out. Three quarters. Three quarters. Yeah, that's exactly what that is. It's three quarters. <laughs> Half plus half of a half. <laughs> it's half plus another half of a half. It's fine, we got it. Okay, and then for the background part on this poppy, now this one, you can let this one get kind of a little bit loose, a little bit sloppy. Usually I just drag the color that I have here starting at one side, and I just kind of go across the top here. Just like that. So it's like the back end of the poppy. Now if you want, you can drop a little bit of color here and there just to get some color variation. That's, that's up to you. I did a little bit and then I'm just going to add another little swoop on the sides here. Now if you spread your, because we're grabbing color from the initial petals that we put down, let's say like you can see in this one here that we kind of almost lost our shape of this petal because we used too much of it to blend out. If that happens, just wait for it to be more on the drier side and then just go over it one more time with that scarlet and work that petal back up. 
just like that. And now we have a more defined petal right there. Now for these kind of teardrop ones that we're doing on the side, we're almost gonna be doing um, just a whole, the same teardrop drop shape just to the side of it a little bit. So the center is gonna start at the same, but my teardrop is gonna go over here like that. So it almost looks like a heart, cute little heart. I'm gonna do another teardrop over here, or if you like the look of three better, you can add one in the middle. Like I said, flowers and watercolor, they work really well together. They're very forgiving. So just whatever you feel um, would look best, you're welcome to do that. So we just completed step one, which is putting down our poppies. And then the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna connect some stem to our poppies and put in some leaves. Okay, so for step two, which is putting some stems and leaves on the poppies, the blooms that we just laid out, I'm going to switch to my two brush because it's nice and thin so I can get some really good lines. And I'm going to pick up some green. Now, if you want a, if you want a darker green, you can mix a little bit of black in there. And when you do these stems, you just want to make sure that you have really light pressure so they come out nice and thick. So, I mean, nice and thin, I'm sorry. So uh, if we're doing our stems here, this is a light pressure stem. That's a nice thin line. This is if we're pushing hard on our brush. Thick. Now poppies actually traditionally, traditionally have a thicker stem, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I just like really thin, delicate stems. So I'm gonna take some artistic license here and just do some nice thin stems on them. So remember just light pressure and remember to move from the elbow and not the wrist. And then that way you're not limiting yourself in terms of stem length. So when we do the stems, we're going to always want our centers to almost be like they're coming out of this spot here in the middle. I don't want my stem to be like stem here, stem here, stem here, stem here stem here, because then it would just look like they're just laying flat on the paper. I almost want it to look like they're gathered and they're branching out. And so to do that, we want them to start almost always at the same point or close to it. So this one, I'm bringing my stem here. So that goes towards the middle. This one is coming towards this point. And if you need to switch your paper and rotate your paper around to do your stems, please feel free to do that, whatever makes it easier for you. And when I say the same point, it doesn't have to be like the same exact dot. Like it doesn't have to be one dot that they're coming out of, just the general area. So kind of more the central bottom areas where we want all these stems to come out of. Here, I'm gonna do a little guy down here. And another one this way. Now sometimes when you're going really thin with your lines, like I just did there, I kind of lost my line for a second. That's fine, just start back up. It didn't start evenly. I'm not gonna stress about that because it's just a little thing. And you can make a leaf coming out of that area or something, kind of cover up that mistake. And then I'm just gonna add, um, I'm gonna kind of thicken here at the top where the bloom meets the stem. Okay, so we have our stems now. We have a good idea of the shape of our painting and where it's going. And now we're gonna add our leaves on top of our stems. So I'm just using that same green color. Now, poppy leaves um, actually have, they're not like the traditional leaf shape where they're kind of like this eye shaped or this curved shape. They're actually more, um, they kind of remind me of like herbs almost or something. There's lots of, um, sections to them. So usually I just do like curved lines, long, thinner lines, and I put them together just like that. So there, I'm almost like I'm painting a little section at a time. So here's one. And then as I go up, they're going to get a little bit longer. And then when I get to that middle stem, I'm going to go back down the opposite side. So if I'm doing my first leaf here, kind of thickening that, and then I'm gonna 
Do the next area. This one's a little bit longer. Now I'm doing my middle one. So that one's gonna be the longest and then I'm gonna go back down. Just like that. And if you want, you can add a little droplets of water in there to get some really interesting textures. If you wanna drop some strong color in right like at the bottom or throughout, you're welcome to do that. I always find variation within washes and watercolors really interesting, so don't be afraid to play with that. Then I'm gonna do another leaf on the other side. Now you can make them thicker. If this is looking a little too skinny for you, we can just do another one and just have it be a little bit more on the thicker side, which just means that our brush strokes themselves are gonna be thicker. Now, if you run into another poppy stem, um, just paint over it. Deal with it. Just deal with it, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Now, usually I stick to like um, five kind of edges. See how there's like one, two, three, four, five. But if you're playing around and you're just like, you know what, I think an extra little one down here would look really nice, then do it. You know, kind of kind of play with it and see what looks good to you. So I'm just going around and I'm gonna do a couple more leaves here on my poppies. On my smaller ones, I tend to do just one because I don't want the leaves to um, kind of take over the blooms. So here I'm just gonna do one kind of coming off. Now this one is just a little bit more spread out. My brush strokes are more separate from each other. See how there's like more white space in this one? I don't think one is more correct than the other. I usually just kind of do both. I do various um, leaf shapes because if you look at a bouquet of poppies, the leaves are in different angles and they're kind of all different lengths. So um, it's not wrong, whichever one you choose to do or if you want to do both. And I'm still using my two, my two uh, round brush to get these nice thinner lines. Now let's say you're going and you did one that has a lot of white space in between and you're like, no, I kind of like the look of them closer together a little bit better. Just kind of connect them. It's not too late to do that. You can always add. That, and then I'm going to drop in some water just for some interesting texture. And usually when I'm doing the bottom of my leaf, I want it to get nice and thin to where it connects to that stem. We don't want it to be too thick and then our stem be really thin, like our main stem be thin, and then this part be thick because then it's not gonna look like it's from the same plant. Okay, so here, I had a, I had a leaf coming off this way in the original painting, but because I kind of missed my line and tried to go back to it and I have this like gap here, I'm gonna actually put a leaf there and kind of cover that mistake up. So coming out of this area, I'm gonna do a stem and then put my leaves that way. And now you can't even really tell that that happened. See? Magical. So on the smaller ones, I'm sticking to more one leaf and then the ones that were kinda the larger blooms up top, I did two. Okay, so that's it for our second step where we put in our stems and our leaves. And then for our next step, we're gonna mix some colors and put in our, eucaly our eucalyptus stems. Our eucalyptus stems. Our eucalyptus stems. That's not what they are. You're not allowed to uh, pick a poppy in California. Is there a flower? You can't pick the golden poppies, that's correct. Golden poppies in California are the state flowers, so it's illegal to pick them. 
Have I done it anyway? I'll never tell. <laughs> You'll never know. Okay, so for the eucalyptus that I'm doing here, um, I just grabbed a little bit of this juniper and moved it here, and then I started mixing in some of my green. And, um, and then, so I kind of have almost three different colors going on here. I have a color that's heavy on the juniper, so it's this really strong blue-green. This one has just a little bit of the juniper, so it's just kind of more of a rich green. And then this one is still just kind of more my olive green. And I'm going to use all three of those colors when you're doing the eucalyptus. Now, you're probably going to get water on your paper, and that's okay. Here, let me see if I can take some of this off. Sometimes you get splatters. Um, the best thing is just to pick it up with a paper towel while it's still wet, or try and just take some water, wet in it, and kind of just pick it up with a paper towel. So there's still a little bit of color there, but it's not bad. It'll be a blue sky. Yeah, at a blue sky. But really that happens to me all the time. I know that we get drips with watercolors, and it's just one of those things that I've embraced because I'm just a little bit too messy to like not ever do it. Okay, so for our eucalyptus, I usually like to start with the very top leaf, and then I make my stem, and then that way I just have a good idea of where the height is going to be for my eucalyptus. I want it to be coming out kind of curved to the left, and I want it to be a little bit higher than this poppy just for height variations. So we're gonna start in on step three, which is putting our eucalyptus, and I'm gonna start with my and it's almost like the same shape as our poppy. It's like this teardrop curved line here. And then now I'm gonna do the rest of my stem. I still want it to kind of come out, um, come starting from the middle, which is where this is going. And um, this still might be wet, so just kind of be careful. I'm gonna actually rotate my paper a little bit. And you're just gonna put your stem in. And then usually what I like to do is I like to drop in strong color or water here and there as we go down because I love that variation that you get. So just making my way down, you're just gonna start doing kind of teardrop shaped leaves off the side. Now they don't have to be symmetrical. They don't, I made it so they weren't symmetrical which is, if we were doing it symmetrical, then I would do my top stem here, my top bud, do my stem, and then it would look like this, where both sides are coming out yeah. at the same spot. Ah, gross. <laughs> the reason why I'm not doing that, because then I don't think it reads as eucalyptus anymore, um, because eucalyptus, um, it, it has them kind of coming down and around, it's, it's like a three-dimensional thing, and when you do it um, totally even like that, it almost flattens that um, stem completely and the leaves completely to where it's just two-dimensional. It's just lying flat on the paper. Now, to make it seem like there are leaves going all the way around the stem, I'm going to be doing kind of like half um, moons almost. They're like, it's like a little crescent moon. So this one is kind of coming out at us. This is, this is called foreshortening. This is why it's shorter and thinner than the others, but it's reading as it's coming out at us and not kind of coming out towards the side. So just kind of as I go down, I'm gonna do one kind of coming out the side. I'm gonna do one coming out the back, which just means it just goes behind the stem and I'm kind of switching my colors as I go, and then I'm gonna be doing like almost half moon shapes as we go down too. And I like to do that mixture because then I feel like the leaves themselves are kind of circling around that stem and it's not totally flat. And then I also like to add in some water drops here and there. And if you run into another leaf, you can either work around it or just paint on top of it.
then I'm actually gonna go back and make these a little bit larger. It's much easier to make something larger in watercolor because you just go back and you make them a bit bigger. <laughs> what? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You just go back, you layer. It's harder to make something smaller because you can't erase in watercolor. So if you're not sure, you can always start small and then add another layer on top. I wanted to make them a little bit bigger because I felt like next to my big, large, poppy blooms, they were just looking a little too tiny. Just like that. So that's our first eucalyptus stem here. And then for my second one, I'm going to do it right next to it to the right, kind of coming curved out to the right a little bit more. And I'm going to change up the color a little bit. This one I'm going to do more of a green instead of the blue. And I'm going to start with my stem here, my, I mean my top leaf, that kind of teardrop shape, and then you just fill it in. And then I'm going to do my stem. Now sometimes when you get in this area where there's so much going on, if you just want to like go to a space that just feels a little bit more airy. Like I feel like over here there's a lot of breathing room, right? But right here there's not a lot of breathing room. Things are um, kind of packed in there. Sometimes I'll just do my stem coming out from this area. And then that way it won't get too busy down there. And then I'm just going to do my little eucalyptus leaves. Now if you want them to be lighter in color, all you have to do is add water. Just like that. And of course I like to drop in some color here and there, especially when it's nice and wet because then it's going to spread out and it's going to bleed. Now when I'm getting down here, I'm just kind of letting things paint over it. And I'm just letting them get a little bit lighter. I'm going to add another little eucalyptus leaf coming this way. And this is just water that I'm using, it's kind of coming out. It just kind of mimics our poppy shape and it gives it more differentiation from the one that's right next to it. So we got our main two eucalyptus stems and we just have a couple more smaller ones that we're going to put in between these blooms over here. So I'm going to have one kind of coming out over here. And over here I got a lot of breathing room so this is where I'm going to put my stem kind of coming out. Now, instead of going over the leaf that I have for my poppy, I want it to be under this leaf. So when I reach this leaf, I'm going to lift up my brush, and then when I get to the other side, I'm going to put it back down and finish that stem. And now it looks like that eucalyptus is going behind that poppy. And same thing when I do get to this bloom, I'm just going to leave that there. And the viewer will understand that the rest of that leaf is behind that flower and that's why we can't see it. Now I'm going to bring a little bit more blue into this because it's looking a little too green. You can always drop in color a little bit later. So I'm going back in with some juniper and just dropping that color in, helping that spread. And now I have a nice contrast to the leaf that I have here in this red. And remember to rinse your brush so you get some lighter leaves in there. We don't want all of the leaves off the eucalyptus stem to be the same value, which is the same amount of like darkness. 
So this one is a lighter value because it's lighter compared to this one. So we want to make sure we have a few different values in our leaves. So when we go on to our next stem, I'm going to move this one kind of over here behind this one. It's the same process that we did for these other things, really easy, just putting that top leaf in first and then our stem and then the surrounding leaves on your way down. So I'm going to grab my paint. I'm going to do a nice little top leaf over here. And then for my stem, I don't want it to be in front of my flower, so I'm going to do that same little trick that we do, which is I start the line, and when I reach the bloom, I'm going to lift up my brush, and then when I get to the other edge, that's where I'm going to put it down. Kind of same thing that way. And now you just put in your leaves. Sometimes it might be easier if you're having a hard time changing your values, is you just put color once, and then every time you go back, you just add water. So I put in my leaf, I just grab some water, just grab some water here, and then now that's pretty light so I can pick up color again. Here. Now these shapes are going to be a little bit funky themselves and that's okay because the, the leaves on this stem, they're moving around. We're seeing them at different angles and so they are going to look different from this standard shape that we're doing. You know, they can look, they can look half curved like this. They could look a little bit thicker. There's going to be all different kinds of shape. They could even be as thin as a line. That's okay, that's what we want, because then that's showing us that these leaves are moving around. And they're not totally flat against this plane. Just like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to do, just looking at this, I want a little something here. So I think I'm gonna do another little eucalyptus here and maybe a little one over here. Now, if you have an area like this where you're just like, okay, this looks a little bare, but I don't, there's not enough room to do a full thing, what I usually do is I just go lighter in value. So I'm gonna take some green, I'm gonna add some water to it, so it's just this really soft color that's almost barely there, and that's where I'm going to, that's how I'm gonna paint my eucalyptus. So it almost looks farther away. It's not competing for attention against these strong objects here. And I just am not going to put any dark colors in there. And then that way, as you see as we're going down, there's something there so it doesn't look like there's this space, but it's not too full or it doesn't look too crowded. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just going to get, I think I'm going to do a, a little bit more of the juniper. So it's almost like a light blue going on. And I'm going to put that kind of going right almost behind this uh, poppy. So I did my first one and then I'm going to do my stem. Remember to kind of have it go back near the center area. And I'm just going to keep on with my light values here. Now let's say that you're trying to keep it light, but you put down a color and it's like way too dark. One, you can leave it because it's not a huge deal. Or you can just take your paper towel and just kind of blot. And I picked up most of that color that was in that leaf. So remember to always have a paper towel handy. They're a great tool when painting with watercolor. And then I'm going to let my leaves get a little bit darker as I make my way down because this area is a little bit bare. 
And so it's okay if they have a presence. Just like that. Okay, so this is looking really good. I think maybe um, this area right here is looking a little bit bare. So I can do one of two things. I can make this eucalyptus even bigger and try and fill it up, or I can just try and go in with an extra stem and um, do a really light stem like we did over here and kind of just fill that space softly, I guess, which is what I'm gonna do because I think that if I made these two big, it wouldn't match what's going on everywhere else on the painting. So I'm just gonna start with really light value, do my top leaf, and then I'm gonna do my stem. And because I'm really just looking to fill this area, I'm not gonna to be too worried about connecting it to the bottom. You can kind of just give them an idea that, oh yeah, it keeps going, but it's like barely there. And if this is just looking too light for you, you can always go back and do another layer of color. I feel like I lost my leaves a little bit when they bled, so I'm just gonna go back in and kind of reiterate some of my poppy leaves. You can always go back and layer in watercolor. Just like that, perfect. Okay, so that was step three. We put in all of our eucalyptus, and then the next step that we're going to do is we're just gonna do our detail work, which, which is just putting in some centers on our flowers, and that's it. Now, the last step is usually where I also kinda of take a look at composition and how things are, and if I need to make any kind of adjustments. Um, so far, I feel really good about the shapes. I feel good about my composition. It doesn't feel too heavy on one side. And I think my flowers are decent sized. If anything, um, I think I might make this one a little bit bigger because it looks so tiny um, compared to everything else that's going around. So just with the color that's already there in a clean brush, I'm just going to kind of add another little petal that's kind of coming up and behind. That's it. And for me, that shape just feels like it, it belongs in that space better and it matches what's around it a little bit better. But this is a good time for you to kind of evaluate your painting, see where it's working, see where you maybe need to go back and make some few minor adjustments. And then for our detail work, we're just gonna grab, I'm gonna stay with my two because I have a nice thin point. And if you don't have a two and you just have a larger brush, which is a six or even a 10, you still have a nice narrow point at the top. So don't feel like you can't do this if you don't have a small brush because you can. You just have to be really light with your pressure to get these tiny dots. So I'm taking my two, I'm grabbing some black. It's just pure black. And I'm just going to be doing kind of a circle of dots around the center of my poppy. So um, if this is the center of my poppy here, it's almost like an invisible line. I'm gonna do my dots all the way around. And you'll see when I'm doing my dots, it's not a single layer all the way around. Because if you look at the center of flowers, there are lots of those little things kind of poking out and going everywhere. So I like to emulate that by just kind of doing bunches of dots. So it's almost like you're doing another ring. See how this kind of looks like another ring around the center? That's essentially what we're going to try and do with with these centers of our poppies. So if this is my center, I'm going to go out a little bit and I'm just going to be doing a grouping of dots in a little circular form here. Just like that. Now I lost the white center on this one a little bit when I was spreading the petals. 
I'm not gonna stress about this one. That one, I, I kept it. I still have a nice white center, but it's just those little things that when you're painting, you're kind of stressing because you notice it. But I promise you that when somebody else is looking at this, they're not gonna notice it. And I think that there's like this really wonderful freedom and just letting go of the small things that I can't really change. So if you're stressing about that, don't stress, let it go. You know, it's just a painting. It doesn't have to be. It's not serious. It's not serious. That's what my six-year-old says all the time. It's just a painting, mom, it's not serious. Okay, now these ones, I don't need to do black centers too because they're just buds. The centers are covered up by the petals that are surrounding it. And this one, because it's kind of angling away from us, um, you probably wouldn't see the centers, but I like to have like a little black of where it goes in kind of right here. So this is my first petal, and then this is the back of the flower, and I'm gonna do just a little couple dots right in there, just to kind of show that something is coming out of the middle there. And that's it, that's it for our step four, is just those centers. So um, our first step was putting in those blooms, and that's a great way to start because then it gives you composition. Um, our second step was we just added some stems and leaves to our, our poppies. Our third step was putting in our eucalyptus. And remember, when you're adding all of these stems, try and center them towards the middle so they look like a bunch. And then our last step was just kind of our detail work. We did our dots and then just kind of evaluating our painting and see if we need to make any adjustments. And that's it. Thanks, you guys. Okay, so we just finished our poppies. It was fun, it was simple, we broke it down for you. These tutorials release every Wednesday at 11, so look out for those. And then we want you to paint them and then come Tuesday night at 7.15 Central Standard Time, we paint them live together. So come with your questions, come with some fun. We're just gonna hang out, have a really cool time. Now, all of these projects, we do a different one every single week, so you can get your kit online if you're just interested in doing the one project or uh, if you want to kind of paint along with us and to make it easier for you we put together a box so just once a month you just do a subscription box it gets delivered to you at the beginning and it has all you need for the month uh, we really believe in teaching how to paint and knowing that everybody can do this so it's just really great to see us all kind of subscribe and paint together and kind of commit to creating because I know that you can do this. So um, please share your work, please paint with us, and um, subscribe.